All right, today we are going to tackle a concept that really, truly bends the mind, the fourth dimension. Now, I know it sounds like something straight out of science fiction, but stick with me. We're going to build a surprisingly clear step-by-step -step understanding of what it could actually be. But first, let me ask you something to kind of get your brain warmed up. Think about this. Everything you see right now is being projected onto the two-dimensional surface of your retinas. Your brain is just incredibly good at interpreting clues like light and shadow to build what you think is a three-dimensional model. And this little quirk of our biology, it's the key to unlocking this whole thing. Okay, let's dive in. To really get our heads around the fourth dimension, we can't just jump into the deep end. We need to build our way up. We've got to start from the absolute basics and climb the dimensional ladder one rung at a time. So first up, dimension one. Imagine a world that is just a single straight line it has length, sure, but absolutely no width and no height. Any little creature living in this 1D universe could only move in two directions, forward and backward. That's it. Their entire reality exists on that single path. Now, what happens if you take an infinite number of those 1D lines and you stack them side by side? Well, you get a flat plane, the second dimension. You can think of it like a sheet of paper. It has lengths and width, so a creature here can move up, down, left, and right. But, and this is key, it has zero depth. It's a completely flat world. And this, well, this is where we live. If you take an infinite number of those 2D planes, those sheets of paper, and stack them on top of each other, you finally get depth. You get the third dimension. Length, width, and height. You see the pattern, right? Each new dimension is built by stacking an infinite number of the one that came before it. So, logically, the fourth dimension should be an infinite stack of 3D worlds. But what does that even look like? To even begin to understand that, we have to go back to that idea we started with, that critical difference between the world we live in and the world we actually see. This is the crucial point. When you look at a sphere, you don't actually see a sphere. You see a flat two-dimensional circle. It's the shading, the way the light hits it, that tricks your brain into interpreting that 2D image as a 3D object. Our perception is always one dimension lower than our reality. Now, let's take that same logic and apply it down a level. Let's do a little thought experiment. Imagine a 2D creature, let's call him Flatman, living on that flat piece of paper. Since he lives in 2D, he would perceive the world in 1D as just a single line. So if you passed a 3D sphere through his 2D world, he wouldn't see a sphere, no way. He'd see a point just appear out of nowhere, become a line that grows to a maximum length, and then shrink back to a point before vanishing completely. He would have absolutely no concept of the full shape. Okay, now follow that logic up to our world. This leads to an absolutely incredible idea. If we perceive 3D as a 2D image, then a hypothetical 4D being would perceive our world in full 3D. I mean, really think about what that means. Just like we can look down on a 2D drawing and see all the rooms of a blueprint at once, a 4D creature could look at us and see inside our bodies, inside our houses, inside a locked safe, all at the exact same time. We can see this exact same progression with geometry. It's really simple. In 1D, you have a line. Now connect four lines at perpendicular angles and you get a 2D square, great. Take six squares and fold them up so all the sides are perpendicular, you get a 3D cube. So what's next? Logically, you take eight cubes and connect them so that all their adjacent sides are perpendicular and you get the next shape in the sequence, a tesseract. A tesseract is basically the four-dimensional version of a cube. It's a shape that follows all the mathematical and logical rules that we've been building up. You see, the problem isn't the math. The problem is our three-dimensional brain. We can describe it, we can understand its properties, but we just can't truly visualize it. And that's really the fundamental barrier, isn't it? Our minds are built for a 3D world. Trying to picture a true 4D object is like asking poor flat man to picture that sphere passing through his world. It's simply outside the limits of our perception. Now, this is the point where a lot of people's minds jump to a familiar concept. You know, if we can't picture a fourth spatial dimension, then maybe it's something else we already know. Maybe, just like in the movies, the fourth dimension is simply time. And hey, it's an appealing idea, and it seems to make a certain kind of sense, right? We move through three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. But when you really look at it through the lens of physics and the patterns we've been talking about, that whole idea starts to fall apart pretty quickly. Here's why. 
First off, time just isn't spatial. The dimensions we've been building, length, width, height, they all describe space. Second, it just breaks the pattern. The first, second, and third dimensions all exist within time. Making the fourth dimension be time makes it weirdly special in a way that just doesn't fit the logic. And finally, and this is the big one, thanks to Einstein, we know we can already travel through time, just, you know, forward and at different rates. An astronaut zipping by near the speed of light actually experiences time slower than we do. They are literally traveling into our future. So if the fourth dimension isn't time, what could it be? Well, let's explore one last, absolutely fascinating possibility. What if all the straight lines and flat planes we've been using as examples aren't telling the whole story? What if the dimensions themselves are curved? Let's go all the way back to our one-dimensional line. Now imagine it has a very, very slight curve to it. So slight you wouldn't even notice it up close. If you travel along that line for a long, long time, you'll eventually loop all the way around and end up right back where you started. That 1D line has curved through the second dimension to form a circle. Okay, got it? Now let's apply that same exact logic to our two-dimensional plane. If that flat surface has a very slight, imperceptible curve to it, what happens? Well, eventually, it folds in on itself through the third dimension to form the surface of a sphere. This is literally what happens on Earth. You can walk in a straight line and eventually circumnavigate the entire globe. So I think you can see where this is going, can't you? What if our entire three-dimensional universe has a very slight, imperceptible curve to it? Following the pattern, what would that mean? You guessed it. It would mean our 3D universe is curving through the fourth dimension. Our entire reality could just be the three-dimensional surface of a four-dimensional hypersphere. And the implication of that is just staggering. It would mean that if you got in a spaceship and traveled in a perfectly straight line without ever turning, you would eventually, after an unimaginably long journey, arrive right back here, at your starting point. This idea leads to this potentially infinite regression. If our 3D world can exist as the surface of a 4D shape, then theoretically that 4D world could be the surface of a 5D shape, and so on and so on, maybe forever. And that leaves us with the ultimate question. We're pretty sure nothing can be truly infinite in the physical world, so where does it end? Is there a final, ultimate dimension? Honestly, we don't have the answers, but it's a pretty fascinating place to let your mind wander, isn't it?